here at the Laboratory of Intelligence Systems, we try to take inspiration from nature to build robots that are better adapted to navigate in the real world that we have around us and not just the laboratory uh, environment. Uh, this includes uh, making structures that are softer, uh, more compliant, just like uh, animals and, uh, and the human body. It all started when we were looking at insects and how they fly and how even though they managed to avoid most obstacles, they still manage to fly into windows and fly into uh, walls, yet it's okay, they don't break, they fall to the ground, they get back up again and they keep flying. So we thought, instead of making robots that just avoid obstacles, why don't we make a robot that can crash into things, fall to the ground, yet instead of breaking, get back up again and keep flying, which is something that nobody has done up to now. So the main applications of a robot like this is to explore hard to reach places where humans or even other robots can't navigate. This is places like uh, irradiated nuclear power plants, uh, caves, um, mines that have collapsed, places where there's very little light, there's a lot of obstacles, so ground robots can't necessarily uh, reach them either, and uh, where traditional flying robots that avoid obstacles but need very large spaces would not be able to navigate. The main uh, differences with this robot is uh, not only is it uh, an autonomous flying robot that can uh, fly by itself, it also has all of its uh, moving uh, parts, the propellers and the control surfaces, protected within a carbon fiber cage, a flexible cage that can absorb collisions. And when it does fall to the ground, it actually has an active recovery system, which is a set of uh, carbon fiber legs that can extend and then pick the robot back up again off the ground, make it vertical and make it stand up ready to take off. So the main challenges in building this robot were to make a robot that can not only fly, but that can also come into contact with obstacles without adding too much weight to the robot. So we need structures that are flexible in the right places to absorb this contact energy. We also need this active recovery system, which is dimensioned so that it can provide the right force to make the robot stand up again without once again adding so much weight that the robot can no longer fly and without changing the center of gravity and the aerodynamics of the robot.